Live Q&A. Um, been tr I was trying to um, get the uh, get the excitement going over the past few days. Oh, hey, Chris, what's going on, buddy? Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I've been just trying to drum up some things. Oops, sorry. I'll turn it off. Turn off the music. Uh, I've been trying to drum up some excitement here. Trying, I was, you know, getting uh, getting people to, you know, sending them private messages and stuff like come and join. So nice to see that some of you showed up. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you. So yeah, we got. Um, I mean, I, I got stuff I could talk about, but I mean, really, this this live Q and A, this is for you guys, right? It's. Uh, you know, pick my brain. We can start discussion. Um, you know, bring up some of your concerns or uh, questions you've you've had that um, you know, or situations you've been in with sheet metal and standing seam architectural sheet metal, or even trade related questions. Uh, you know, we have. Uh, we have a big shortfall in in in, uh, in talent, and uh, you know it's a great trade to get into. So I, uh, yeah, just uh, ask away. Throw your um, throw your um, question down in the comments. Um, okay, so Chris is first up here. He's saying, oh, that's a good question. Um, S lock or standing seam for cap and why? Well, I'll I'll just I mean I share I share my experience with it, um, and uh, it's pretty much 50 50. Uh, the the better connection for coping metal, the better connection will always be the standing seam. It's a raised seam, the uh, the the folded up metal is uh it's always gonna um it's always going to uh uh drain water much better than an s lock and s lock is gonna allow uh water to come in uh having said that though there are some things you can do uh in preparation for the s lock now um what i've done what i've had, what I've had to do in the past for a lot of flat roofing contractors that have subbed out the metal to us was uh you know prepare the substrate that the metal's going to go on to with say a peel and stick underlayment um now time saving with s lock it again it's also it's also kind of 50 50 it's not i mean you got to think of in fabrication side of things um is it going to be because you can fab the cap a lot quicker without having to put an S lock on it, right? So you're gonna save the time in the shop bending it, but then on site you have to preform all of the um, you have to preform all of the standing seam connections. So you know where are we again? There's a 50/50. Where are we saving time there? You know, um, you know the 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 shop guy. Uh, you know you can you can prepare a lot of it that way but um, you know it's gonna be to the guys on site um, anyone who's joining in late here hey Jesse hey uh, Juan Carlos right on man we're uh, we're just talking about coping um, Chris says we cut out the SS uh, the standing seam in the shop uh, with the bandsaw yeah right on man so do we um, speaking of the bandsaw, and uh, hopefully that answers your question, uh, I guess to sum up whether s lock or standing seam on cap, it's 50-50, uh, it's but the best connection will always be that standing seam, without a doubt. Um, boo -boo -boo. Okay, well, yeah, I can touch on that, that bandsaw. Oh, from Germany, right on, man. I don't know if you notice, if, if you've seen my last name, but it is of German descent as well. My grandparents are all Germany, and they came from uh, they came from Germany uh, a long time ago. And uh, 
I can't remember what like I'm always put on the spot where exactly they came from but um, yeah they they fled that place real quick at the time um, but, but, boo. let's see so yeah the band saw we did a video we just released uh, a video this morning and uh, oh, okay ice and water under over oh yes okay yeah well I'm gonna get to that just let me I want to touch on this one thing about the band saw uh, we did the um, we, we posted a video this morning it is a, it is it was meant to be a very short video because the idea behind it is to you know give you guys a quick you know snippet you can see it and uh, if you need to repeat it over you can play it on repeat it's very short um, so that's the whole idea behind the short video uh, the uh, right on Chris we'll see you in a bit but the uh, yeah the band saw uh, I had uh, I, I that was that was the whole idea behind that video was a short little technique you guys to share with you so getting to the uh, getting to whether we should be uh, whether we should have the ice sorry the comments are a little distracting the 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 ice and water before the drip edge or should the ice and water be installed after the drip edge is installed hey tri city flashing what's going on brother um the uh so the ice and water thing so the the starter it does a few things it um uh, it's something that it, it's it has a structural it has a structural um uh, you know offering to the roof itself it actually uh holds down the nose of that panel and in heavy wind it, uh, it it's gonna take a lot of beating right so I mean when it comes to the starter itself it's a very it's a very important part of the structural integrity of that roof um, but having said that um, a lot of the guys uh, or sorry a, a lot of our a lot of our audience um, sorry ladies didn't mean to throw you under the bus there Oops. so a lot of our audience is uh, is this is a this is a common question that we we see a lot of. So, what we do, you know, what I done, and over time I've I've developed, uh, you know, over time, you know, like my practices, right? So, what I've gotten to with this scenario is underlayment first, starter second, and a lot of guys are gonna say, it, um, well, what about the like the 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 underlayment is going to it, it should be installed second uh, after the starter so any condensation coming down the roof underneath the panel will actually drip off and over onto the starter yes that's i mean good that's that's a good way to think but my there's only one problem with that and i've seen this scenario where the the actual exposed wood underneath the the starter itself can um, is is then like so for the the three inches that are three to four inches that our starter is actually sitting and screwed the the screw lip um, the the wood that's in contact with that uh, metal there really isn't any barrier to uh, to any condensation just along that little three inch four inch strip right you have metal in contact with wood and what's going to happen is um, what's going to happen there is you're going to have wet wood. You're going to have uh, condensation buildup in there. And over time, what will happen is that plywood is, will rot out in that three to four inch area up from the eave. And so I've seen this right taking uh, taking uh, you know shingle roofs apart where we're going to do a new install, and always along that edge where. We're, do, we're replacing plywood all along that edge. So if there is um, a membrane there before the starter goes on, we eliminate that issue. Now, the starter goes on after the underlayment. What are we doing with that water that that, conden that condensate that could possibly come in behind? Uh, we're, we've been using 
so we the starter goes on we've been using uh, a, a tape by Delta tape it's the uh, it's the uh, multi-band tape oh, sorry, I got one right here we got right here yeah the Delta multi-band tape that's nah, backwards backwards anyway anyways this comes off it's got a paper backing here and uh, starter goes on and we just we just tape the top side of that fly it's like zip tape you know zip tapes a big thing right now uh, same thing so it's a flashing tape it just goes along this stuff I've put it on and it's like oh my god put it on make sure that's where you want it because um, well yeah Mer hey Merlin what's going on man what's going on yeah uh, yeah see I would I would like to bring you in I just don't know what the audio is gonna do um, I guess there's really only one way to find out but typically you need like a headset in you know otherwise it's gonna start echoing so uh, damn we got to figure that out I'd love to have you on maybe on another one uh, shoot okay I'm just gonna finish up with this yo yo, yo. so um, yeah just a flashing tape on the top side of that will eliminate the uh, any more condensate coming underneath that starter so that's our solution to that I know it's kind of a long drawn out explanation but um, that uh, it's a very important question it's it's a, a lot of uh, yeah okay okay it, a lot of, it's on a lot of people's minds so um, yeah right on um, you know what Merlin let's let's give it a shot buddy let's give it a shot bring you on here hold on one sec how do we do this uh, to uh do it but yeah let's see what happens Mer yeah Merlin, what's going on buddy yeah how much hey can you hear me all right yeah i can hear you good you hear me okay yeah man nice. yeah it's good nice we're real live now it's cool when i was watching before it gets like a 30 second delay when you're actually watching it so oh, it's funny, okay. I, like type something in and then like 45 seconds later, you'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, having a good day, man. Yeah, man. Cruising away here. I'll fix myself up so I don't look so shambly. Hey, man, you're, it's the, that's how we go to work. We we look like homeless people most of the <laughs> yeah. time, so I get it, bro. <laughs> yeah, you got it, brother. You got it. Yeah, so, so what's yeah, man. What's the so, subject? What are we talking about? Well, we're, I mean, right now I just finished, I've just finished up talking about uh, standing seam, the, the drip edge, whether we're going uh, underlayment first, drip edge, oh, or nice. drip edge first, or underlayment. you told them it's best to do both? What's that? Did you tell them that it's best to do both? I, well, I, I always put the underlayment underneath first, starter on, and then we use, uh, yeah. we use good old flashing tape here to you, stop you the can't condensate. Beat that from system, because it's the best of both worlds. If you do it just with the flat, the ice and water shield on top, then you're fucking yourself over underneath. If you ever mm -hmm. get any rip or any puncture in that, you now have completely mm -hmm. unadhered wood and a completely unprotected fascia board. Also, if you're getting back yeah. in your gutter or anything else weird like that, you're fucked. But exactly. Yeah. I think the best practice that you could design, if you want to do the best way that you could, it's like you're saying, put it on first, go down the fascia board. I think if you really want to get crazy, wrap underneath the fascia board if you want to be insane. And then uh, fucking... And then, you're just like, protecting the substrate, right? Exactly. You know, you're making sure that Because if you anyone has ripped out a 100-year-old roof before, normally that fascia board is always gone. Every time. you rip, Like yep. on the really old ones, the, the eave edge is what goes first. So uh, if you can really do... I mean, you're not going to hurt yourself by putting that extra layer on there. And... You um you had actually you and I talked earlier about um the YouTube video I put up. Um we um we put it up. You had a you had a question about some things, so you want to touch on that and hopefully oh, I can yeah. clear something up for you. Yeah, so you had that cool bandsaw thing that you were doing. I just thought probably some of the people watching would be curious like I uh, I guess me too. Is there any concerns about the spark similar to what you have with grinders with a bandsaw? Or is that a different type of cutting where you don't have to worry about that? Okay, so and I'll, I'm gonna answer this question and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna cut it off because I'm sure there's other people wanting to get in here, but um, but I appreciate you coming on, man. It's so cool. Uh, so the uh, the the reason for the bandsaw versus say a grinder or 
uh, I'll touch on that first. So with a grinder, we have a brick and cut, which when it comes to the product, um, a pre-painted steel product, you get um, you run into issues with that abrasion cutting because what happens is you start to compromise that um, that paint structure and it, it'll burn right with that heat it creates and the sparks it burns and then um, what you'll get is premature rusting and uh, with a bandsaw we're actually making cuts oh Tri City says bandsaw cuts do rust as well well I'm just um, for for um, what we're what we're talking about here and Tri Tri City you, can you share what you what you had uh, where where that information comes from but I mean we haven't had a problem but um, what it is, is is we're cutting the metal and we're taking chunks out of it rather than burning it and that's why we do the bandsaw yeah, yeah. have you heard about any have of you heard about any of the new fancy uh, metal new, blades or anything yeah in uh, say like a circular saw yeah. We, I mean, I think the guys don't like it so much because it uh, it's noisy and it shoots up crap in your face. And I know you can get the the metal blade saws, but I don't know who's gonna spend four or five hundred bucks on a on a Milwaukee corded saw. But um, the uh, we are we we actually invested in the in that snap table. Not sure if you yeah if if yeah, you know I, about I, that yeah I, so. I, I, that's really that's really the best because what we're doing is we're getting the the shear cut, and that shear cut is the best. And I think this is what Tri City is gonna is is basically gonna follow up with is is when we have that shearing action cut that scissor cut is uh, the um, it actually closes off the end of that and it, and it it closes that galvanized around that uh, around that cut. So yeah, that's the way to do it. Can't beat, yeah, man. Can't beat the shear cut. I we we still right cut on. everything with the the uh, Makita cordless straight shears or hand snips. Okay, that's it. That's all. Yeah, right. Just a shear cut, like you say. Yeah, can't beat it. Or we stick yeah, stuff in the brake when we can and use our rolling cutter again. Right, another shear cut. I also have the Wuko fucking shear cutter. That, the Sprinter. Yeah, have you seen those? Hold it. I use it yeah, on my one? panel machine here. I'll, uh, I'll show you. Oh. Ooh, panel machine up and show running. Right home on, bro. Here. <laughs> yeah, here's my new panel machine, all fancy and new, ready to rock and roll. Woo, buddy. Yeah. Merlin is on fire. <laughs> right on. So, yeah, here, I'll just show uh, you yeah. here. I think this is this is another cool shear cutter. It's just a hand-powered yeah, one. Yep. I use that for slicing up my coil. But that can be another fun one. But I think that Wuko, Wuko's got that um, basically sitting on a bit of a skateboard, so you can pull it down the center of a panel as well. Ooh. So yeah, man. See, yeah, that man. sounds and, uh, fucking dope. That sounds like right what I because want. you got a you got a sheer cut and you got a straight cut in preparation for that Wuko bend, right? Yep, and, and it's if, rolling. If that... It's a roll, which is so much smoother than the fucking straight shears. And, yeah, I love that idea. And I don't know if you – if you uh, um, when when you're doing Wuko, and we'll, we'll, we'll shut her down after this because you're, you're hogging the time here. <laughs> but the, uh, that, that Wuko will pick up any inconsistency in your cutting, right? And it'll, it'll transfer that to the bend, and uh, you'll get, you know – little waves and oil canning that doesn't necessarily have to be there and so yep yeah 100 percent agree fucking right sheer cut is the way right on bro yeah thanks for coming on man happy to be here have I'm a good good. good rest of your show peace bro yeah peace out all right wow that was cool cool that was the first that was the first for the standing seam channel first guest on the Standing Seam channel, Merlin's from Merlin Contracting. Dude, you're killing it out there. Like, you should you go go to this guy's Instagram page. It just it'll knock your it'll knock your sacks off. Okay, so we got so Tri City flashing is followed up. He goes, we bandsaw cut our S slot cap flashing, and it will start rusting due to the rock cut edges. Noticed it going back to sites a few months later. Good to know. Good to know. I mean, nothing beats the shear cut, but. 
I mean, in terms of, uh, so, so that goes back to uh, Chris's point about should we use S lock or should we use standing seam to connect our joints? Boom. Always goes back to standing seam. You know why? Because standing seam is the best. Mechanical lock, standing seam is the best. Uh, let's see here. I don't know what the hell is going on. Anyways, boom. Jay Coop, what's going on? Right on, right on. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, bandsaw, it just, it's it's a balance between, you know, your abrasion cut and your, like, you know, dabbing. Um, especially if you got a massive, excuse me, if you've got a massive, massive order of cap to do and you want to cut a 100 stack, you can do it, right? And, uh, I mean, you sacrifice a little bit of the quality for quantity, which... I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, are you gonna are gonna tell me to go, uh, you know where about that? Um, but it is it is a good option. I know a lot of guys do it, and uh, and uh, yeah. So, anywho, Ben Alvarez, good to see you, buddy. Right on. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we touched on both of those. Any other any other uh, questions from anyone? Um, is uh is welcomed um not sure uh if there was any other questions that was was being asked while i was talking to merlin there because uh it's hard to, it's really hard to to see and do oh you know what i saw richard with a question okay he goes how to properly handle and store zinc i see other installers having white rust issues but your panels look great okay so richard i would like to touch on that because we did experience a little bit of that up uh when we were doing our um our zinc install in the sioux and i mean it bit us in the butt we had like it was improperly stored keep the shit dry right keep it stored in a dry spot temperature regulated spot um reason being is um, when especially when it comes to zinc it is so susceptible to uh elemental is that a word elemental no no um it's so susceptible to the elements uh because it is a natural product beautiful product natural product is so susceptible to uh, to temperature variance. Um, it's susceptible, like to you know, to uh, condensation. So what'll happen? Reason being, you have uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe it is now elemental. Write it down. We made a new word today. Congratulations. Uh, the uh, oh geez, what was I saying? The yeah, the the zinc uh, it being so. What happened with us? We we left a few panels. Uh, so we we ran a few panels. We left them out there. What happened was we didn't get to that section as soon as we thought we were going to, and we forgot to put the panels inside. So what happened was, is a few of the panels got the white chalkiness to it, and uh, and that was that was underneath the sticker too. So zinc any kind of not copper any kind of natural um you know uh unpainted naturally patinaed product always keep it in a dry temperature regulated area if you got a big job starting up you know head in there talk with the builder say we need an area this goddamn big and like go in there and take it over okay like take it over. Don't let anyone in there because what's going to happen is you're going to get HVAC guys. You're going to get plumbers. You're going to get uh, electricians in there potentially walking all, all over it. They just think it's steel. You know, they have no clue, right? So protect it at, at all costs and keep it warm and keep it dry. Um, Tri-City. 
Oh, what's uh, okay? Yeah, good question. Sorry, Trice. I'm gonna get to that question, but uh, the what temperature? Uh, Richard, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're. I mean, four degrees plus four <coughs> is uh, is optimal. Uh, that's a good point. Should be in a contract to have time controlled areas. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Put it in the contract, right? Put it in the contract. Uh, we rec like for example, we require a we require an area that has you know uh, you know temp uh, temperature oh, ten to fourteen degrees. Okay, yeah, sorry, ten to fourteen. I was thinking of uh, the cocking meters. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, ten to fourteen degrees Celsius is the uh, is the um, or or were, was I thinking of the temperature you can install this in? Is it all the same temperature? So storing temperature between ten and fourteen degrees and um, workable temperature are they all the same, or can can you install it in the colder? Uh, t ten tears under ten degrees. There you go. And Richard here, he's he's the Rhine Zinc rep for uh, for all of Canada here, so he knows what he is talking about. Go visit him on Instagram. Ask him some questions. He's uh, yeah. Okay, so getting back to the uh, the bandsaw. Uh, Tri City had a, a question. Do you bandsaw your standing seam ribs on snap lock panels or cut by hand? Uh, my first, um, my first, like I lean towards cutting by hand with the, for the snap lock. Uh, you can, and when when I was doing, I did a little bit of. Uh, I did I did a little bit of snap lock for a company years back and what we would do is we would we would leave a little bit off the end cut it fold it over and uh, you know we're we're prepping them on a bench we're you know we're cutting we're folding we're prepping everything at the bench cutting to length sending it up sort of thing um, that is uh, and you know that that's gonna that's gonna be a part of the panel that is in contact with water constantly. It's it's the the part of the roof that's gonna be, um, yeah that's yeah that's the 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 eave end um, of the panel. I think that's what. What about the top side? We're cutting everything by hand on our panels. Uh, when we don't uh, we don't when it comes actually. When it comes to the panels, we have what's called a, a snap cable. It's a little expensive, but uh, worth every penny. And what happens is with that piece of machinery is that it'll shear cut your seams and um, all in a line. Actually, maybe we can do we can do a little demonstration, or you can go visit their website or whatever. They have all kinds of instructional videos, but uh, it shear cuts the seam. You know, and you can set the step and everything, and you know what I mean. So, uh, but you know, uh, setting up the bit like maybe Tri City. What a, what about you guys? Do you guys do uh, do you guys do a, a bandsaw on any of your panels? You know, um, yeah, yeah, they are very slick. Definitely very very slick. Crazy, but slick. And you know, I find also too that um, I mean, you got to have a, a a fair amount of square footage in front of you, you know, a, a sizable roof to justify the use of that machine, right? And I mean, we mostly, and it's got to be a real cut up too, right? It's got to be hips and valleys because that 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 sucker really comes into play when. Um, we have a lot of angle cutting to do, right? Because you can set the step on it and you can, uh, and it's all sheer cut. It's got a, like a big pizza cutter on it. Once, once the, once the seams are notched, you slide it along to the cutter, you pull the cutter, 
and you move to the hemming station, it hems it for you, and then boom, you know, cut it to length, you're ready to go. And once it's set, it's set to that step uh, for the valleys, right? So uh, Tri City says, we just cut by hand. It would be nice to find a quicker way to cut without spending a fortune on a machine. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. But um, take also take into account the, I mean, the whole scope of the time it takes uh, in terms of efficiency and productivity. Um, look at every phase of that, right? And does it still justify you having the machine? That machine we have, I know some guys prefer not to use it still because they say we're, I mean, we're just as fast hand cutting, you know, it doesn't, you know, and some guys are, are more comfortable with hand cutting and, and folding with the, you know, with a hemming tool, you know, uh, that's what I find. Uh, uh, some guys don't even bother. Right. And they're, and they put on just as many squares in a day because of how they approach the, the, uh, the, the fabrication and the prep process. Uh, I mean, if the machine, the machine itself doesn't make you any faster, right? Uh, like, like my dad always used to say, first you get good, then you get fast. Not never the other way around. Uh, yeah. So, um, the, the sheer cut always, always, always the best way, um, to, to cut any, any form of, of sheet metal and uh and and again the reasoning behind that is when that scissor action occurs across the face of that metal right what will happen is the shear cut will actually close off the coatings right sealing the end of that mild steel or the or that that base metal and i mean uh, with steel that's very important right because if we don't you're going to get premature rusting and in the valleys it's no good at the eaves it's no good um, so always try and shear cut your uh, your your uh, material for sure okay so we're at about a half an hour is there anyone else with any other questions um we did release a video this morning uh, with a, a quick a quick tip and uh, you know let me know if if uh, if you know if it if it was any if it was valuable to you guys and uh, yeah Tri City no problem man appreciate you coming on and uh, asking the questions getting involved here I uh, actually I, for, I forgot to say what our, our mission statement is and the whole the whole reason so the standing seam channel is meant to give standing seam the exposure it deserves through education and community which is exactly what we're doing here we're creating a community based out of the trade itself and um you know uh it would there, there's a lot of nonsense out there uh, especially in social media and especially on youtube and you know who's looking at all this stuff? The next generation of metal workers, right? So I think it's our duty to kind of infiltrate the platforms, you know, as as professionals and as trades guys, I think it's our responsibility to invade these platforms and really make our um, really make our trade known uh, what it is you know, what, what it really is to be an architectural G metal worker. Um, let's not get lumped in with other trades. I find that happening a lot too. Comment, comment in the comments if you've experienced that too as well. Um, here's a question for you guys. Has anyone ever asked you to present your, your ticket ever? Has anyone ever asked you? I know the uh, referrals are great, and uh, but referrals can be, um, how would you say, referrals can be, you know, so um, 
bias driven sometimes i guess you could say you know one guy knows this guy another guy knows this guy and that's why you get referred um but has that have has anyone ever asked you for a ticket to present you a ticket do they even know to ask you for a ticket and my i mean my answer to that is no i don't have yeah union jobs yeah yeah they will um I mean, the union, I mean, that's kind of the, the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, as the upper echelon, like they're kind of, and they want that, right. They want that. They, they need that in order to attract new members, right. They need that. So they, they work real hard on that, but I mean, it shouldn't be the union. It should be the trade, the trade itself. Uh, over in Europe, I know the trades that, uh, that, that we have are, uh, or, or the, the trades that they have are uh, considered guilds, right? And uh, they protect it like it's, it's their, I mean, it's, it's their livelihood, right? They have to protect it. If they don't, um, if they don't, I mean, it, it's going to get washed up much like it has here. I'm going to say it, man, because that's what's happened. Um, sorry, I'm just going to go on a bit of a rant here, but, um, yeah, if you, if you guys ever experience this kind of thing, drop it in the comments or, or hit me in the DM later, uh, and, uh, we can talk more about it then, but yeah, if you want to, um, um, if you, if you want to just, uh, you know, connect later, that's great. I, uh, I think we're going to shut it down. So Anyways, anyone who's come on today, thanks for coming. Uh, this this was actually a really really interactive Q and A. I uh, we we do this every Wednesday at noon, so uh, be sure to be sure to join us next week. And um, yeah, thanks for everyone's uh, appreciate you guys coming here, and thanks for everyone's interaction who interacted today. And uh, have a great day, guys.